As I mentioned earlier, this is an active RCW management area. Uh, RCWs require a fairly specific habitat condition, which really lends itself to using fire as a management tool. Number one is the fact that they require uh, a trees that have an, uh, enough diameter to be able to start rotting in the middle because it's that capability that allows them to create their nest. RCW, red cockaded woodpeckers, are the only woodpecker that nests in living trees. All the other ones are dead ca uh, tree cavity nesters. And so they will create a, uh, a cavity in one of these trees around here and there are some around and we're staying away from right now because it's uh, uh, nesting period. Uh, if you go around an area on a national forest and you see uh, trees with white bands on them, uh, that means that is within a uh, colony site. You want uh, the perfect uh, area would be between 50 and 80 of uh, basal area per acre, square feet basal area, and also they don't want understory that is any taller than six feet tall. Uh, this creates the perfect habitat for this this bird. So longleaf pine was a great habitat for this bird because the recurring fires that occurred in longleaf pine historically across the southeastern United States were recurring between a one to three year interval and so it was keeping the hardwood component down and it was also encouraging the grass component by removing a lot of the litter and uh, competition on the ground. Longleaf pine also has that grass stage that is very important because it is a highly fire adapted species. But you got to get the regeneration going, which means you have to have a good seed bed, which means you have to have fire go through to remove that litter as well to, uh, to give the chance for those seeds to fall on the ground on the mineral soil, uh, germinate and establish. If you look at this site, you'll see a lot of large trees, but you may not see a whole lot of trees coming out of the grass stage uh, what we call the candelabra stage where it has the first branches coming out and that is a management issue that they have here is that there's not a lot of regeneration going on but the birds are here on this uh, on this site so what would happen and what would be the source of the data that you're going to get for this lab exercise is that you would go out and create a, a plot basically you usually do about a 10 acre uh, plot for some measurements and you measure a couple things. You're going to use a prism to capture the uh, basal area and then you also are going to use a D-tape to measure within that tenth acre the diameter and the height of all those trees. The height is just a good way to go ahead and kind of give an idea of uh, stand structure. There's also a slight correlation between tree height and the incident of the heart rot that would allow the that would be attracted to the bird for a cavity. The other thing is when you're using a prism, and since you've been through 205, you should know this, is that uh, it captures trees that are in, but it doesn't really differentiate between what the actual diameter is. And the better trees are going to be more than 10 inches of, uh, in dBH. So we could have a site that may, may be counted in in a plot but would not be a good uh, tree to count towards that. So you want to be able to determine that as well. So I'm going to have the crew go out and demonstrate what they would do for laying out uh, a plot, getting the DBH, getting the height, and then counting basal area. And they would recall, record all that data. So. Okay, why, what was your basal area? 90, so that would be a little bit high for right now because uh, they prefer 50 to 80. So one of the things you'd want to do is consider how you could reduce that and that's where possible mechanical thinning would be a, an option 
on this. Do you have any trees on less than 10 inches DBH? No. Okay, so this one doesn't have any of those trees. I counted in the basal area, but, uh, but we're not of the adequate size. 